Build on a Mother is uh, an initiative. The aim of this initiative is uh, to empower these type of women, these barren, infertile women in Africa through improving access to information, health, but most importantly, change of mindset and culture shift and also empowering them economically and socially so they can be independent. One every four couples in Africa and developing countries are suffering from infertility. But there is another important number here. It's 85% of these cases can be prevented. It's actually due to untreated infectious diseases for all the long you know, habits and, 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 and uh, you know, uh, things we're doing in Africa we are advocates for. Child marriage, unsafe abortion, unsafe delivery, genital mutation, sexual infection, HIV, infectious diseases. And I agree with Dr. Cheryl. She said that women prefer to have HIV, infected by HIV, than being infertile. And in Uganda, we are aware that between 15 to 20 percent of the couples that attempt uh, to conceive actually fail. So we have uh, a number of clinics that do offer fertility care services. However, these are private clinics, and of course the services are very expensive. The ordinary person cannot afford. So it costs between $3,000 and $5,000 for one to go through the entire process. So uh, as a country, of course, Mark did approach us. And of course, at political level, we decided to take this campaign on to create awareness and show uh, the population that infertility can actually be prevented, but also um, integrated into healthcare services. The way we are wired in Africa, Whenever we talk about infertility, you get married one year, two years down the line, you don't have children. The first blame goes to the woman. It is the woman who carries the shame, the embarrassment. She's the one who carries the tears at night that nobody sees. In Jacqueline's case, it is the husband who had the problem. But because infertility is not spoken out loud, they had no platform of, or avenue of sharing their problem. Creating awareness, information, and education is very important when it comes to matters in fertility. Because the frustration of the couple is very grave. And especially when it is a man who has a problem. We should look at women not just as a mother, but that a woman is more than a mother. So with this program launched by Merck, More Than a Mother, we hope that it just don't stop in Kenya, Uganda, Liberia, Nigeria, Cote d'Ivoire, but all over, so that people can understand that there are so many factors that lead to infertility, but with the right information, the right places to go, it can be prevented. Increasingly, all of us uh, in uh, high resource countries uh, have an increasing interest and uh, obligation uh, to provide education and to provide service and also uh, to translate in the shortest period of time the advances that are, have been made in our laboratory uh, to uh, middle and lower resource countries. When patients come to the clinic, they are afraid to come to a fertility clinic. They don't want people to know that they are taking treatment for infertility because they would think that something went wrong with them at their early period. In most of these cases, only the women will show up, not the men. Now, the consequences of this has been that most people would prefer to go to a pastor to a religious house to treat infertility. So by the time the doctors see most of these people, it's too late. So we're happy that Mark is now launching
this process in Nigeria and in Africa in general. And this cultural shift will enable many, many people in the rural and other areas to seek now the proper treatment for infertility and to recognize the fact that there is respect for womanhood than motherhood. At the end of the day, even if you do not have this baby, womanhood still has a good role in creation. Thank you, Rasha, and it's a great pleasure to be here. And I first of all uh, want to uh, acknowledge uh, uh, Julie Simpson's comments and uh, absolutely endorse those. Um, I believe the IFFS has uh, an important role to support this fantastic initiative. And uh, I, I think that education is clearly uh, essential. And I think we can support very much the educational and training initiatives which are necessary uh, in uh, countries uh, in Africa to uh, develop the capacity for cost-effective uh, infertility treatment. Thank you very, very much, Dr. Kennedy. Thank it's you. really great. So people ask us what we are going to do to support these women. Are you going to just walk away and tell them, sorry, bad luck, it's too late for you? No, actually we didn't. And we created a program called Empowering Burner. So all these infertile women who cannot have children anymore, because they are old, uh, older to have children or uh, for biological uh, situation because some of the women due to infection, they lost all the ovaries and tubes and everything. So there is no hope to have children. So we said we created this program to empower them economically, establish for them small business so they can be independent and they have income by themselves. In Uganda, we have so far registered more than 500 women we have a local government system from village to parish to district where we use the local leaders to register the women who are infertile. After registering them, we put them in groups and ask them what economic activity would be able to empower them and be able to enable them to get those social economic entitlements that in other words they have missed because they are not married at the moment most of them we facilitate them to choose their own enterprises what do the ministers what you know where do they see all of this going where we have uh, increasing infertility rates on one hand and increasing human life loss in terms of abortion rates where do we see this going okay. i think one powerful message that has rallied parliamentarians and policy makers is the fact that the message is infertility over 60 percent of the cause are treatable caused by infection and it can be prevented the preventability and how it can be prevented has made many parliamentarians to go out to let the people understand that when you prevent infection, then you can avoid infertility. That is one powerful message that has rallied. Thank you. I think the other thing that we'll need to focus on is on capacity building. And I thank Mark more than Amada, especially seeing the first two participants come from the sister countries of Kenya and Uganda. It is an, indeed an honor for Kenya and Uganda to have produced the first. Indeed, for Kenya, that is the first embryologist for a population of more than 42 million. So that tells you that the gap is huge. So a lot will need to be done. Could someone comment on what do you think has been the single message that's resonated the most with policymakers or the public that has caused them to become supporters of this initiative as opposed to ignoring it, which has been a chronic condition for the past few decades. You know, the one or two messages that actually have resonated and caused people to say, yes, I want to help. And we are seeing a number of political leaders now coming up to support this initiative by Mark. I want to really commend Mark for this initiative because as you heard, infertility has been there. Infertility has existed 
And as I said, since man was created. For those who are Christians, the story of Abraham and Sarah is not new to all of you. But the issue here is that nobody has actually come up to speak about this challenge. And Mark has picked on this niche. In my own country, as I said, there are five clinics operating, providing these services, and they're all private, but there is no regulation. But I'm happy to state that the Ministry of Health, working with the Uganda Medical and Dental Practitioners Council, has now a draft regulation. We are waiting for the Solicitor General, the legal uh, arm of government, to input into it and have a law to regulate these services in the country. An infertile woman is rejected from all its human rights. So what Merck is going to do in Asian countries, especially in our country, Afghanistan, we are, there is only one IVF center. So I mean Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, also they are suffering the same. Bit for this conference, my object or my dream was to set up an institute in India because India is not underdeveloped country. It is developing country. It is going ahead. We have got infrastructure. We have got excellent talents, and we have got devoted people to work with us. We, with IFSS, with the Mark, and with Indian Society of Indian Society for Assisted Reproduction and Indian Fertility Society, we are prepared to set up an embryology training institute in India. If all of you are ready to support us, we are there to work for you. And already, Indian Fertility Society is running embryology training program along with the European Society of Reproductive Medicine. So I, if Mark joins with the Indian Fertility Society, we can take up the training program for embryologists. When we started in Africa, there was no embryologist. I mean, in sub-Saharan Africa, there is no African embryologist. They, take, they get embryologists out from outside from Europe or South Africa or Egypt. And of course, this affects the quality, as you know, and the cost. And uh, we said if we want to improve access or even to consider building IVF centers without embryologists, it will never happen. So we uh, decided to provide training. It was very difficult to find candidates who is willing to train an embryologist because it's not like there is no also awareness between the healthcare provider. This is a good career or there is a career for this. When I talk about training, I'm not talking about one week and two weeks training because this is not taking anywhere. A lot of you embryologists and understand less than six months or I mean three months comprehensive and a very busy IVF practical training. It's the minimum you can accept to develop a, a good embryologist, which you can train after that and update. And this is what we were looking for. That's why we collaborate. South-South collaboration was very important. We send our embryologists, African embryologists, to Indonesia in a very, very busy, busy uh, training center. And they got three months training. And now they are completely standalone, full-fledged embryologists. They can be in Africa. What happens to the doctors and the healthcare providers themselves in the context of the More Than a Mother campaign. And I want to say two things particularly. One is how to approach uh, fertility care as an holistic uh, uh, program to have a dual diagnosis, the medical diagnosis as well as the psychosocial uh, disorder. The second thing is to incorporate uh, within the monitoring system, within the new uh, registry, incorporate infertility and social stigma issue as one of the uh, uh, components to be monitored and reported on annually.